Hello everybody, good morning. Today we are celebrating Palm Sunday, which is also known more accurately as Passion Sunday. And before we get started with our, um, with our worship service, I just want to make a few announcements so that we won't interrupt the service with them. First of all, my name is Abby Murphy. I'm the priest in charge of St. Thomas's Episcopal Church in Belrose Village and St. Elizabeth's Episcopal Church in uh, Floral Park. Um, we have uh, just a few things uh, to ask of you and uh, to let you know. So first of all, if you are watching this, please make a comment below uh, so that we know who all has, uh, has visited us and who all um, and how many people we have uh, that have been here with our service. Uh, if you like what you see, if you enjoy this, please remember to uh, like and subscribe to this channel. Now, there's a leaflet uh, which you can download to follow along with the worship service. And this is uh, down below, there's a link. And so uh, if you need to do that before you continue with the service, pause, it will wait for you and you can download your leaflet and then uh, we will continue on. Also, just to let you know, there is a link below uh, with through which you can donate either to St. Thomas's or to St. Elizabeth's to help us pay our bills, to help us uh, keep afloat and continue our ministry so that we will be able to uh, open our doors again with great joy and um, um, you know hope uh, when we uh, come through this uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic. And uh, I want to thank you so much for your generosity. It's uh, wonderful of you, whatever amount you can give. And even if you can't give, we thank you for your prayers as well. We also will be having services during Holy Week, which are going live on this channel for Maundy Thursday at 7.30 p.m., for Good Friday at noon, and for Easter Day at 9 a.m. Uh, all of these are Eastern Daylight Time, so I hope to see you then. All right, let us all center ourselves for a moment and we will begin with the, um, with the Liturgy of the Palms. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloak on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now at this time we would normally have a procession. And so I would say, let us go forth in peace. And everyone else would say, in the name of Christ, amen. So imagine processions that you have been in in days past. And hold your branches high and wave them and sing all glory, laud, and honor. And also... Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. Okay. Oh. There is one more thing I should do. As we return to our original place, we have one more prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Turning to page 79 in the Book of Common Prayer, or if you are following in the leaflet, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. Incline your ear to me, O Lord, make haste to deliver me. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my ears with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. 
When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you. I have said you are my God. My times are in, in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. Incline your ear to me, O Lord, make haste to deliver me. A lesson from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me. Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It was the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break.
break upon us. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the na at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 19. The Song of the Redeemed. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? The priest paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them. They prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And the disciples became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. 
While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you from my, in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to his disciples, You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. And then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, Jesus came and found the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed a third time, saying the same words, then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given the crowd a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man arrest him. At once Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. And then the crowd came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on the sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. And then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scripture be fulfilled, which say, which say I must, it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter, following him at a distance, as far as uh, the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, Peter sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they are testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to Jesus, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. 
But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? We have You have heard now his blasphemy. What is your verdict? The scribes and the elders answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in Jesus' face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When Peter went out on the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again Peter denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then Peter began to curse and swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. Judas said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But the chief priests and elders said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, Judas departed, and he went out and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. They were fulfilled, then was fulfilled, what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accuser, accu accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, and not even a single charge. So the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to the crowd, Whom do you want for me to re release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests and the elders had handed Jesus over. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas to whom, uh, and ha to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And the crowd said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? And all of them said, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate asked, Why? What evil has he done? But the crowd shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put him put it on his head. They put a reed in his hand and knelt before him and mocked him, 
saying, Soldier, hail, King, uh, soldier, hail, King of the Jews. They spat on Jesus and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, the soldiers came upon a man of Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. When the soldiers came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And then the soldiers crucified Jesus. They divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over Jesus' head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their head and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking Jesus, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if God wants to. For this man said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. About three o'clock, Jesus called with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to him. When Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. Tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After, the, after his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. There came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. Joseph went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Joseph had rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive. He said, After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, Jesus' disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Jesus said to them, You have a guard of so soldiers, go. Make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It has been my um, my habit on Palm Sunday to let the gospel stand as its own um, its own meditation, and to have the people reciting with me, "Crucify, crucify him," and to realize kind of viscerally what it is that's going on today. I just want to give you 
a very brief sort of meditation, some, some thoughts that you can continue to uh, think about as this week moves forward, this Holy Week. First of all, we have the Palm, uh, the Palm Sunday part of the, the uh, worship. And we have palm branches like these here. Now I chose to set this with me because as you can see, the palms are formed into a cross. And I don't usually purchase these, uh, these palm crosses um, because I don't have uh, somewhere to take them. They're usually taken to a cemetery. Um, they are often decorated, as this one was, with a, a bright bow and with an Easter lily. But we're not there yet. We're not at Easter yet. We are at Passion Sunday, Palm Sunday. We have heard how Jesus was hailed as king, and we have heard how very rapidly the thoughts of the crowd, the the intentions of the, um, you know, of all of the uh, leadership of the Jewish faith turned against Jesus. They turned so quickly. In part, this was, at least in part, it was because Jesus wasn't the kind of king they wanted. What they were shouting at Jesus, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, that means save us. Save us, Lord, save us. That doesn't mean, oh, hail your gloriful one, glory, glory, uh, glorious one. It means save us. They expected Jesus to come in and save them from the occupying Roman forces, but he didn't do that. And so, because their hopes in that way were dashed, they didn't understand what he was saving them from. And that would be their sins. So they turned their glorifying of Jesus into punishment. They turned it into a Roman cross upon which terribly evil people were crucified. It was a horrible death. And we know that. But at the same time, we know the hope is coming. We know that Jesus will save us from our sins. We know that Jesus will be raised from the dead and will be glorified forever. We have that wonderful 2020 hindsight. But we mustn't skip over what happened, that Jesus died alone. And as we suffer in this this time of, of coronavirus, as we suffer in this time, we may feel alone too. But know this, we are not alone. Even if we are isolated all by ourselves in our own uh, houses, in our own apartments, in our own places of living, even if we are isolated somewhere in a hospital, we are not alone. Jesus is there with us. Jesus knows what it is to be alone. Jesus knows what it is to be deserted. Jesus knows what it is to suffer and to be mocked and to be scorned and to be, um, in fact, tortured. And so Jesus knows whatever it is that we are going through. Jesus knows and Jesus is there with us. And so we too say, Hail, King of the Jews, but we also know that he is not without empathy for what we feel. And so I invite you to consider this and to continue to think about how Jesus is helping each and every one of us in our daily life, even on this most peculiar Palm Sunday and Passion Tide. Amen. <coughs> Now, if you will, please turn in your prayer books or wherever <coughs> you have this information to uh, the Apostles' Creed. It can be found on page 96, 96 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 
pardon me if I cough, I have a little post-nasal drainage and it is just an allergy, I promise. <coughs> the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray in the words as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. I'm using suffrages B today. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever and ever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for hum the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> o God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through the, our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Today I'm going to sing an office hymn. This is a hymn that is typically... Uh, sung during uh, during uh, Christmas tide, but it is 
rather appropriate for today too because of the second and third verses in particular and so i ask you uh, to listen to this this is and if you have a hymnal handy you can turn and join with me um, this is hymn 104 a stable lamp is lighted a stable lamp is lighted whose glow shall wake the sky the stars shall bend their voices and every stone shall cry and every stone shall cry and straw like gold shall shine a barn shall harbor heaven a stall become a shrine this child through david's city shall ride in triumph by the palm shall strew its branches and every stone shall cry and every stone shall cry though heavy dull and dumb and lie within the roadway to pave his kingdom come yet he shall be forsaken and yielded up to die the sky shall groan and darken and every stone shall cry and every stone shall cry for stony hearts of men god's blood upon the spearhead god's love refused again but now as at the ending the law is lifted high the stars shall bend their voices and every stone shall cry and every stone shall cry in praises of the child by whose descent among us the worlds are reconciled at this time I invite your intercessions and thanksgivings. We pray for all those who have asked our prayers. We pray for all the clergy, all the, the bishops, all the um, all those who are ill, all those who are first responders, all those who are um, helping in the hospitals, we pray also for those who are voluntarily helping others um, in, in whatever ways they can. We pray for those who are lost, who are lonely, those who are left in sadness and sorrow because of uh, being isolated at this time. We pray for those of our parishes. We thank god for all those who are are amongst us we thank god for those who are gathered here today in this uh, virtual way we thank god for those who cannot be here with us and we ask for healing strength and healing power from god upon all those who are ill upon us in our villages and cities and towns in our states, in our country, and throughout the world. Amen. Um, and now if you will turn to 
um, the prayer of St. Chrysostom, which is page 102, page 102. Not him 102, as I just did. That was silly. But page 102. The Prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>